obviously movies that are still great movies in the old style can still be made under these conditions. They just have more of a sort of unique and unexpected flavor when they actually happen. Ross Douthit, your host for the Film and Culture series at the Athenaeum Center for Thought and Culture. So let's take a few examples, right? A movie like uh, Fury Road, the Mad Max sequel directed by the slightly mad Australian George Miller, came out about 10 years ago, is probably the best action spectacle movie of the 21st century in certain ways. And you go into that thinking, oh, man, it's, you know, it's just another Hollywood cash-in. They're reviving the Mad Max franchise, except without Mel Gibson, because he's persona non grata. I mean, it's just going to be, you know, a desperate money grab. And instead, it's just this incredible, intense ride that is, you know, everything that sort of the superhero movie kind of aspires to be. You're sort of pulled through this action spectacle, but it's done in a way where you can't even see the special effects happening, where it all seems to be really happening. And it's just sort of a vision, a post-apocalyptic vision that looks like nothing else in cinema at that particular moment, right? So, so that's, that's sort of an example in the realm of spectacle. In, to pick a different realm, you have filmmakers who are still, you know, who are still doing great work. Often they're filmmakers who sort of made their mark in a little bit, in the pre-superhero era, but just to take two very different examples, um, I think you could say that Wes Anderson and Quentin Tarantino continue to be really interesting directors, even under current conditions, with movies that find audiences and do well. I think that Tarantino's Once Upon, Upon a Time in Hollywood, if the Academy had any sense of what they're supposed to be doing, they would have given that movie Best Picture. It made over $100 million, I think, at the American box office. So it did find an audience. It's a little bit of a, you know, a sort of meta commentary on the movie, since it's a movie about Hollywood that stars Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Again, two of these sort of movie stars made at the time when they were still making movie stars who are playing in the movie sort of not quite star and his, uh, you know, sort of slightly dangerous friend and right-hand man, but that's, that's, a, that's a classic American movie. I think Grand Budapest Hotel, the Anderson, not the most recent Anderson movie, but um, a couple Anderson movies ago, was a career peak for him and a sort of brilliant marriage of his kind of weird dollhouse style with the actual tragedies of European history. Thought that was a great movie. Just in the last year, I did not love Everything Everywhere All at Once, the movie that won Best Picture, but I thought the two best movies in the Best Picture lineup this year were legitimately great examples of cinematic storytelling of very different kinds. One was Top Gun Maverick, which, like Fury Road, you feel like, oh, you know, this is just Hollywood sequelitis. We're returning to you know, we're sort of mining 1980s pop culture because everybody recognizes the Top Gun brand. Um, but instead, it's just so much more than that. It's a better movie than the original by far. It's a kind of perfect action movie with Tom Cruise doing sort of the peak of a certain kind of Tom Cruise performance in a movie that, like Fury Road, interestingly, sort of avoids sort of total digital immersion, has a lot of practical effects that make you feel like you're actually inside the fighter jets in a way that just doesn't work if you're doing everything with special effects. And it's also a movie uh, that, you know, if you read it properly, you will realize that Tom Cruise dies at the outset of the movie and the entire movie takes place in purgatory. So I'm sorry to give that away if you haven't seen it, but if you see it again and watch carefully, you will see that I'm correct. So that's a great movie. And then on the sort of art house end of the spectrum, Tar, the movie starring Kate Blanchett as the as a sort of brilliant composer undone by cancel culture. That's a movie that in a different era would have found, I think, a much larger audience than it did. As it was, it found basically an art house audience and not much more. 
And its director, Todd Field, made a couple of quite good movies some years ago, Little Children and especially In the Bedroom, and hadn't made a movie since. Again, in a different era, I think he would be working more. But I think Tar would be is a fascinating, complex, challenging, mysterious movie that would have seemed like a great movie in 1976 or 1958. It doesn't just seem, seem great by comparison to the competition. So that's two genuinely terrific movies out of the Best Picture nominees this year, which shows that, you know, the movies, the movies as a central cultural institution may be dead, but you can still have great movies nonetheless. And when you have an awareness of some kind of loss, some kind of cultural loss, it's worth trying to do something about it. 